Okay, so uh, I will talk a bit to you about uh, life positions. And uh, life positions is a theory that Derek Byrne started in the 60s. And uh, it has to do with how we relate to other people and to ourselves um, in communication and relationships of various kinds. And uh, it basically, uh, if we are going to make the most crude division possible, we can say that I can see myself as either good or good or bad, and I can also see other people as either good or bad. And if we stick to this very crude division, uh, then we have four different positions that ensue from this. And here we have them. In the first, I am good and other people are also good. And uh, of course, this is a very positive position because I have basic uh, trust, but basic self-confidence in myself and, and good self-esteem and I have basic trust in other people as well. So it's being a good person in a good world. It's really very uh, nice. Uh, unfortunately, we are not always in that position and sometimes we feel that other people, other people, they are really good, but myself, well, probably not as good. Uh, and I get into a position of be feeling inferior. And in this situation, I assume this position of that I am not okay and other people are okay. So I am inferior to them. And if I'm going to tell you the rest of what I'm going to tell you from this position, I have to begin to apologize that I'm talking such crap as this because I understand you're very intelligent, good and clever people and, and, and it's bad of me. I found this whole theory in an old book uh, on the shelf up in the attic and I thought that, hell, I don't know what to tell them tomorrow, so what should I do? But I can tell them this. So it's the best I could find, but I'm really sorry. I know I'm insulting your intelligence. So this is not the best uh, position to, to have from a pedagogic standpoint, but still it's much, much better than the next one, because in this position, I am really very, very good, but you, you are totally ridiculous, may I say. So from this position, I think you should be, if I, we are going to continue with this uh, <coughs> lecture from this position, then we have to say that uh, you should be very thankful that I am here because I am one of the world's le leading experts on positions and communication and stuff and psychology and all this stuff. And the only problem we have is how are we going to get all this very useful knowledge into your tiny, tiny little heads? I don't know. It doesn't look so easy. Okay? So the nose is quite far up in the air. And uh, I'm a smart person in the world of fools. Uh, so maybe not so good pedagogic position after all. Still, it is better than the last position because in this position, uh, I am really stupid. And, and I must say that you really look stupid too. So my question here is, what are we doing here? And, and all we can do is to sit here and wait and hope that somebody comes here and lets us out of here so we can get away from this terrible uh, enclosed situation. So of course this is not very functional when it comes to uh, pedagogics. But you can see that there is a great difference from, uh, that ensues from the various attitudes and you can always make the experiment yourself and going on from one of these positions when you encounter uh, people in your daily life. You tr if you try from this position, for example, uh, then you're going to get some interesting reactions, I I'm sure. Don't you think? Yeah, right. <coughs> so, normal people, we, we change positions all the time. We go from one position to another. Uh, you can start up in the morning and start, wow, it's a wonderful day. Uh, you feel like embracing the world, other people, they are wonderful people, and I feel really good about myself. And then you drive to work, 
and the bloke who is driving before you is not really following the lanes but drifting here and drifting there and you get more and more uh, angry for each turn he takes and after a certain time when there's a red light you drive up to him and you open the window and say what the fuck are you doing here you're driving like an idiot or something like that and <laughs> That is when you realize that, whoops, it, it, it was the boss. Not a good idea. So, <clears throat> you know, from this position, you quickly uh, get into this position instead, and you feel that you made a fool of yourself, and probably this uh, race that you were going to talk uh, about your boss, uh, with your boss about, is not going to be. And you're lucky if you can keep the job, even. And then someday, you know, people feel you feel like you're very unmotivated and everything is bad and the, the sky is grey and dull and <coughs> nothing funny is happening and you feel as though you might as well sleep over the day and get rid of it and, and lie there in bed and hope for another much better day to come along. And that is also perfectly normal. So, we drift between these various positions, but it's also true that there's one of these positions uh, that is more important for us than the other, that we identify, where we spend most of our time, most of our mental process in this position, uh, where we take our important decisions about, you know, who we're going to marry, how we raise the kids, uh, what kind of work we will pursue and this kind of stuff so this position will be really important and now I will show you something very briefly about uh, how what this has to do with developmental psychology so we are going to look at this chart which is a little bigger and here we see first of all we have this healthy position I'm okay, you're okay. And in this position, uh, this is where the children are born. <clears throat> Before, in the early days, we thought that uh, children were born autistic and uh, later got into very schizoid process where they couldn't tell themselves apart from the floor or the ceiling or something. And, and then they would get into persecutory, persecutory anxieties of various kinds progressing to depression, a state from which they never really uh, came out. Nowadays, with the last finds in developmental psychology, we find that children are born totally healthy, and I think that you can assure yourself about that if you, you have some experience of little babies, little infants, and you look at these infants, and I would like to ask you here, is there anybody who has seen a really sick infant? A little baby psychopath? No, no such, no such things. Well, this is, you are totally right according to science. This is where we are at, at this moment. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you have to reach a certain level of development in order to begin to distorting reality and developing psychological problems. Uh, and you are not there when you are newborn. Uh, there is nothing that tells us that uh, there is a limit for the little baby as to the goodness that they perceive in themselves or other people. There is no such questions. And if they stay in this position for the rest of their life, they're in a wonderful position because they have a basic trust in other people and they also have a good self-confidence and self-esteem. So they would be a good person in the good world. When there would be problems, they would be realistic because when you're in this plus-plus position, whether you are there, you know, uh, for good, more or less, as a, as, a, as a base, or if you are there, you know, just temporary, like most of us are, once in a while, we're having a good time, and feel good about ourselves and others. <clears throat> what happens is that you're very much here and now. 
So you're not so much influenced by uh, uh, history, what has happened to you, if your mother always gave your sister the biggest piece of sausage, or uh, what is going to happen tomorrow, uh, anxieties about that. No, you are more oriented towards the here and now. And uh, that makes for a certain amount of realism. So you are realistic. Uh, when, when it comes to your feelings, they are realistic, they are easily understood. You get angry if somebody is bad to you, you get sad if something sad happens, you get scared if something frightening happens, etc. So it's very easy to follow you. You're easily understood. And the solution to problem is to cooperate. That is the most typical solution, not the only one, but the most typical solution for problems is to cooperate with other people. Because since you have confidence in yourself and in them, well, it's, it's a functional thing. <coughs> Unfortunately, not all kids stay in this position. And actually, I must say that these people who stay in this position, uh, they are wonderful, but they are very, very deeply abnormal people. But they are abnormal in a good way. They are more healthy than the general population. It's not normal to be so healthy. I think maybe maybe three, four, four percent maybe of the population can be said to have that as a basic position. It's just my hunch, you know, it's not scientific, but that's what I think. Then we have most people, most uh, children, they progress into, or they regress rather into this solution here, uh, where there is not goodness enough for everybody, uh, and there is something wrong, and I can't tell what it is, but I'm not getting everything that I need to get for my good development as a child. And so in this situation, I take on the blame. I put the blame on me. And the reason for this is that if I would blame my parents, or foster parents, you know, if I would blame them, uh, and they were the persons who were not good enough, then I would be a little child in the hands of two lunatics, which is a very vulnerable and exposed position. By taking the blame on myself, I'm still being protected, I'm still in the hands of very capable and, and good people, and I'm being protected in this situation. So that's really good for me. So <clears throat> therefore, I will take the blame on myself. And I can tell you a little story about how I got into this position, and or at least what I dreamt when I was about to make the choice. Uh, I was dreaming that we were on a, a, on a, a road trip with a car and we drove across a very, very high, a high bridge that was going over a, a very steep uh, surrounding and uh, of course we drove through the rails and we were hanging on the edge about to fall very, very long distance. And I was in the back seat and I knew that I had the possibility to get out of the car because we didn't have any safety belts in, in those days. And uh, still, what would be the good of it? I mean, my mother and father, they would have been lying down dead in the valley. And what could I do? Little three and a half year old boy. Uh, I couldn't do anything. So I took the decision that I would follow them down into the depth and then we fell and you know how it tickles in the stomach when you fall <laughs> terrible stuff then this dream turns very freudian i'm not going to comment on this solution of my audible problems but in any case we the, the car falls on a lighting house and the lighting house you know is very organic and it throws the cars up high high up and down to the bridge and then we continue to drive so uh, i resolved the situation by being solidaric with my family i put my family's needs before my own needs in this situation and therefore the family survived and we could continue driving and of course there is an oedipal tra drama in this as well so in any case, <coughs> when you're in this 
position, then you're psychologically normal. Most people are here, I would say maybe like 80% or something like that, are in this position. <laughs> and uh, when you're in here, you, you feel that you are to blame if there are any problems. And uh, this is pretty normal. This is, this is what normal people feel, that you're a bit inferior to other people. We don't want to present ourselves as inferior to other people. I'm not saying, hello, my name is Stefan Sandström. I'm such a jerk. I usually don't say that when I present myself because I feel that if I do present myself in this way, then people will probably believe that, yeah, he has to be a jerk since he presents himself that way. So instead I try to <laughs> look uh, very confident in myself and say, yes, yes, I'm Stefan Sandström, I'm not crazy at all, uh, totally normal, totally sane, yes, no worries. Uh, and, and this is uh, how we usually do it. Since the problems here are my fault and not other people's, the solution is that I have to work harder, I have to try harder, I must do better in, in uh, various ways. And I have a tendency to take too much responsibility uh, for the situation. Okay? Uh, <coughs> typical feelings are feelings that uh, say that I have not uh, done too well, I, am, uh, I feel guilt, I feel shame, I feel depression. These are feelings that show that I'm not totally okay. Uh, and the typical defense is that I turn whatever negativity I have against myself so I can become my own worst enemy. Some children, they cannot stay in this position because they cannot have that confidence for their parents. So instead they have to keep on drifting down to this position uh, where, they, where they are okay and other people are not okay. So in this position they are more exposed <coughs> because they are little kids in the hands of two lunatics. But there are two little things that contradict this picture so that they can keep from it. And here, this, uh, this uh, uh, usually has to do with problems in the parenting, that there is uh, too little quality or too little quantity of parenting uh, from the part of the parents. <coughs> the problems that they experience are that other people, they have the problems. It's my bloody mother's fault that she didn't, that I came late because she didn't wake me up like she should have. So you see, it's my mother's fault and not mine. So there is an eternal changing over of responsibility from me to other people. And I am not to blame. <clears throat> so with this problem here, the solution is usually either to use force to enforce my own visions, my own view and my own will, or to use manipulation to fool people when they are in a strong position. Uh, since here I do not believe in other people, I do not respect other people, uh, the most typical feeling is fear or anger. And the typical defense is projection, in which I make them responsible for uh, my, my own uh, problems. Then again we have a situation when all the goodness collapse and we go into this schizoid position. When you do it permanently the most uh, typical result is schizophrenia and people who withdraw from uh, the situation into an internal world stopping to relate to other people uh, and isolating themselves. And it is very typical here that we stop distinguishing between the internal and the external. Uh, we stop hearing, you know, the, the voice that we all have in the head. And we start experiencing it as outside world voices.